gentlemen, thank you for coming. It, it's over there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed for coming. This really started off as a, um, a Home Guard luncheon, because it's, it's the 60th anniversary of the forming of the Home Guard in 1940. And then it sort of crept into uh, Dad's army a wee bit, so, it's, so we really want to, I just want to mention about the, the, the actual Home Guard, um, and few people I think realise just how much they meant in 1940. I know they did to, to my mother and, uh, and our neighbours and so forth, who said, oh, never mind, you, you know, bombers going across the top of us and so forth and dog fights and everything else. And they said, oh, never mind, Mr. Taylor nicked or he's in the Home Guard, we'd be all right, you know. <laughs> it was an amazing thing, really. But that, that was, and, and I remember my uncle at that time who went down after Anthony Eden's speech, and I have mentioned this before in one or two radio programmes, that... He, he, he went down and went straight down to the police station and said, I'm Captain Tobin, I was in the First World War, and he said, I'm taking over the, the uh, local defence volunteers. And the police sergeant, who hadn't heard the broadcast, said, oh, well, very kind of you, sir. Uh, what, what, uh, what exactly is it? What, what will you be doing? He said, I'm taking over the local defence volunteers. He said, oh, well, 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 where are they then, sir? He said, well, they've just been formed tonight, Anthony Eden. He said, oh, oh, it's, 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 I've never heard. Well, anyway, uh, that's very nice of you, sir. So he went away and he was automatically the leader of the local defence volunteers. And he came back, and this is true, I was staying with him. Uh, well, two or three of our family were staying with him. And he came in, and he's a great man, man, six foot four, who I might say that during the First World War, he actually put out of action a whole German machine gun post single-handedly and afterwards it was cited in the uh, London Gazette how he did it and he didn't he didn't shoot them or anything like that he strangled all four of them <laughs> <laughs> and his company sergeant major who was with him said it's absolutely true he just got in and throttled them all and that that was the end of that and he came back that that night after going to the the, uh, the actual police station and he took out single-handedly all the big furniture in the road. He took it out of the house and put it across the road. Now, the road was a cul-de-sac. <laughs> and he came back inside and he said to my aunt, put the kettle on, he said, uh, I put some one or two things out in the road. He said, they won't come through tonight. <laughs> it's the most amazing thing. It was an amazing bloke. However, as I say, this is, this is a tribute to the, to the Home Guard, and a lot of people don't realise that, in fact, over 100 um, members of the Home Guard died during the, uh, the time that they were in operation. Uh, a few of them, I'm afraid to say, um, through booby traps that they had made, which went off prematurely, which, of course, you know, uh, was the start, perhaps, the, perhaps, of Dad's army. I don't know. Um, however, it, it is a, a great pleasure to see you all, and... What I want to do is to mention some of the people who in fact have been behind not only Dad's Army but also other uh, series because I think that's pretty important. <coughs> We're going to, we've got a, um, uh, some entertainment for you afterwards which I won't mention too much about you. You'll have to watch that screen there. But the boys, uh, two of the lads, and I'll mention them later, have put together a tape which is a bit of a Mickey take of me as well. But they're all clips from Dad's Army uh, quite short ones, plus I think quite a long one. However, um, so we'll see that and we hope, we hope we have some fun with it. Because I don't want to get people up, as we've done before, in various things around the country, or will you come up and say, what did you think of, you know, was it good to be in Dad's army? What did Arthur Lowe eat for breakfast? Did John the Measurer go to the toilet regularly? We got all these questions. It's, it's unbelievable. See, you know, we don't want all that. So I'm not going to get anybody up here at all. Anybody I mentioned, just lift your hands up and that's it. And if somebody wants to come and talk to you afterwards, that's wonderful. But we don't want all this to get through the afternoon because it's getting on now anyway, you know. We don't want it, it gets really boring, all these things, I, I, I find, anyway. Uh, 
but uh, there certainly are certain people here who I know we ought to mention who come and really support comic heritage so so well in the, in their various uh, uh, functions that they have. Uh, one of them there I can see is is David Lodge, who is a great water addict, and uh, Molly Sugden. I'm so pleased. <laughs> playing a part which has become gone into not just Dad's Army folklore, but also, I suppose, into television folklore, uh, when he said, what is your name? And Arthur says, don't tell him, Pike. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Philip Maddock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Could I just mention, you see, when we do these things, and I get so fed up that people treat us like something rather special, we're not, you know. I'm, I'm much happier going into Sainsbury's and buying some baked beans and planted potatoes out than I am somebody coming up and saying, Oh, you're a, it's how lovely to meet a star of Dad's army. What a lot of bleeding rubbish it all is. <laughs> it really is, you know. Oh, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I'm honestly, I'm not, you know, I'm a very secure person. Bernard Cribbin said to me, he said to somebody once, he said, Bill Pope is the most secure actor I've ever met. He said he couldn't care less about his ego or anything else, and it it's really makes me very cross. And I said, well, I'm only just an ordinary person, and I'm very lucky to be in the business. I should never have come into it in the first place. I got no talent, I couldn't dance, couldn't tell a jag gag, couldn't tell a joke, so what am I doing? Suddenly things happen, you know, that's what this business is about, so I keep very quiet about it all. <laughs> oh, I do, I do, I do. But there are people who not just are behind every... Uh, well, every successful television series, but particularly uh, we know them from uh, those people who have been uh, part of Dad's Army, as it were, uh, who have been right from the very word go, and somebody who not only went round and selected the locations for the programme, but also he eventually directed some episodes, but at the same time, he also used to be on, on hand to wake us all up at the hotel. Now, this is quite difficult because, uh, I mean, first of all, you had Arthur Lowe. Before we had, uh, you know, sort of tea-making facilities in the rooms, they used to bring in the, the teapot, with the silver teapot and, and so forth, and, and the cups in the morning. And you'd, Arthur Lowe would dash out onto the landing and say, who, who was the boy? Where's that boy? He says, if, if, if he, I told him only one, I only wanted one tea bag in the teapot and he's put three in again. Where is he? All this going on when we were going out, you know, a major television series and he's going out filming that morning and he's more worried about one tea bag in the bloody teapot. <laughs> And breakfast, of course, you know, that was, dear Harold saying, uh, we're, on the, we're on the coach in, in 10 minutes. Mm, really? Mm, yes, I haven't had the breakfast yet. Where's the, where's the man? Where's, where's, where's the waiter? Uh, where's the ham? Uh, is it good ham off the boon? Is it off the boon? <laughs> mm, it's not off the boon. I'm a kipper's, but I want a proper kipper. Not those soggy things you get in plastic wrappers. Uh, and I want toast, and I want it nice and crisp. Uh, and John Norrie would say, you know, every time we had a call, say, well, it's five minutes now, John would say, hold on, hold on, I've only had one cup of tea and that was cold. <laughs> you know, it was quite, quite extraordinary. And then, as I say, so the gentleman who really kept us together during those early years, and as I say, went on to direct some episodes, is here today with us, is Harold Snowd. Jimmy Perry, who's going to come up and just wind things up in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much, everybody. I'd like to thank all members of the Dad's Army Appreciation Society and all our old team, getting a bit less these days, but still we do keep going. Just to tell you that my partner, David Croft, sends his regrets. He hasn't been too well, but he's okay. He wishes you all a happy day. And I just want to say one thing. The, when we had the reunion at the Oval, I shared a taxi with Clive Dunn. And Clive said, you know, Jimmy, it's all, it's all been like a fairy tale. It's all been like a magic wonderland. And he was quite right. Thank you and good afternoon. <laughs>